For months, space responded with silence. No sound. No data. Just noise. And then, like a whisper from the abyss, it spoke again. You are watching the Scientific Files channel and prepare for this journey. The Voyager Room, launched in 1977, was designed to last no more than a decade. Its destiny was to explore the outer planets and, after that, to go where no human-made machine had ever gone. Against all predictions, it survived for over four decades, enduring the vacuum, solar storms, and interstellar radiation. For years, it continued transmitting data, even billions of kilometers from Earth. But recently, everything stopped. The once constant signal had turned into mere meaningless noise. Apparently, its mission had come to an end. The silence seemed definitive. There were no commands, no responses. Then, something changed. Suddenly, and without any action from the controllers, a new signal began to be detected. But it wasn't just a common return. It was different, cohesive, clear, undeniably intentional. A complete data packet transmitted with the precision of a system that should no longer be functioning. The scientific community reacted with astonishment. An award-winning physicist even said that this could change everything we know about the limits of interstellar space. The spacecraft, considered lost, had not only resumed communication, it had done so in an impossible way. The data showed that the systems were operating outside normal patterns. The transmission frequency was different. The source appeared to be slightly misplaced from the expected position. And more than that, the content of the message contained readings that were not predicted. What had once been merely a corrupted digital signal now had coherence. The spacecraft seemed aware, in the sense that it knew exactly what it was sending. It didn't seem like a technical error. It sounded like intention. NASA quickly began to treat the case with caution. Protocols were activated, channels closed, access to the data restricted, but enough leaked out for speculation to grow. Some began suggesting that the detected signal was not exactly coming from the probe, but from something that was using it as an intermediary. The idea that the Voyagero had become a passive transmitter of something greater began to circulate behind the scenes. If true, the message it carried was no longer human. And this raised a new question. If someone, or something, out there chose to reactivate the signal, what are they trying to tell us? With the transmission restored, what began to emerge from Voyagero's data made it clear that it was not only active, but traversing a radically different region from anything previously observed. The instruments recorded abnormal fluctuations in the local plasma, variations so intense that they shattered any accepted model of the interstellar environment. The magnetic field around the probe behaved as if being distorted by invisible forces, oscillating erratically, unrelated to solar activity or the presence of nearby celestial bodies. Furthermore, the density of particles hitting the probe suddenly increased, as if it had crossed some kind of invisible boundary. But this concentration was not uniform. It appeared in bursts, in pulses, as if something were emitting these particles at almost rhythmic intervals. No known phenomenon, neither stellar winds nor remnants of supernovae, exhibited this pattern. The behavior of the environment surrounding the Voyagero was different, almost artificial. The readings showed a kind of organized disorder, something chaotic, yet with traces of intention. Amid this, the probe began to register a subtle deviation, an alteration in its trajectory. The variation was small, almost imperceptible, but continuous. With no active thrusters and no identifiable gravitational force nearby, there was no explanation for this movement. Scientists tried to associate the deviation with radiation pressure or micro-impacts, but no model could account for the constancy and direction of the change. It was as if it were being pushed by something unseen, an unmapped force, 
located in a region previously considered inert. From that moment on, some began to use a new term for this zone, liminal space. A transitional area where the known laws of physics seem to begin to fail or perhaps behave differently. It is not exactly another dimension but an edge, a point where the known bends before what is yet to be understood. In this liminal space, everything previously thought about the behavior of particles, gravity, and the electromagnetic field operates under a new set of rules, or perhaps in the absence of them. The idea that the ship had merely crossed the boundary of the solar system was no longer sufficient. It seemed that it had entered a layer of the universe that was previously hidden not by distance, but by perception. And now, this region began to show its effects. If the Voyagero is not just distant, but in another state of space, what else might exist beyond this threshold? And if this zone is merely the first step toward an even greater reality, perhaps we are not exploring the universe. Perhaps we are traversing what exists between the universes.